I'm not two bottles of wine drunk. I'm 18 beers. No, I'm not 18 beers. I'm nine beers drunk. I told you not to get wasted. That's why we're doing the hour-long thing. I've had one beer and one half of a beer. Don't worry. I'll, so, I'll, I'm going to be behaved, but I could not wait. Okay, that's fine. That's fair. Can you, you hear me okay? Because this is coming through this thing. Is my yeah, is cool. my beard in the way? Your beard's always in the way. How come I can't get out of these stupid... Do we uh, have viewers? It's yeah, only my good cousin, when you're wasted. That's what I'm talking about. My cousin's here to troll us <laughs> and do mushrooms. Yo, hook um, me up. Send it, send it through the mail through some Teletubbies. No, not... We're all around. What, what are those TY... What are those teeny weeny baby... What, what, what's the TY thing called? Teeny baby? Beanie babies. Beanie babies. Beanie babies? Beanie babies. TY beanie babies. What kind of beer are you drinking tonight, Caitlin? Let's get let's start this show off right and talk talk about something. <laughs> um, well, I don't think they sponsor us, but Budweiser, That's fine. Budweiser has a special going on right now. Eighteen beers, and I didn't bother paying attention to the price. I just yeah, you never. I never pay attention to the price when I go to the liquor store. I go I'm for the deal. Fire. I go for the deal. When I see, like, when you see the thing that there's a, like, you don't even, what is that? What is that? Yeah, you just see the pile of beers. You're just like, I'm just going to grab whatever. What do you got there? Is that an orange? Is that some sort of orange flavored thing? No, it's a Nickel Brook headstock. It's a, it's a Nickel Brook IPA. It's very hoppy. Okay. Uh, 7%, 7% IPA. I don't think I Because I'm like a hipster. Hops. Oh, dude. Hops are the shiznits. It, drop a drop what you like to drink in chat. I know Olin's probably likes Olin's because well he's Australian. And Don't tell him he likes Foster's though. No, well Olin's because... when he comes to freeze gets an Olin's. I'm not sure if that necessarily means he likes Olin's, but uh, Olin's all the way. There you go. <laughs> well, there you go. Olin's, what's your second favorite kind of beer? It's not Foster's. I think Don't it's... tell him he likes Foster's. Just because he's from Australia. Australians Someone's... hate Fosters. Well, as I, I understand. I guess, so what, they probably don't adopt then. I get it. That's I see you attempted to make a joke for comedy. Look at all these, uh, you see? Get, fuck, get fucked on the Fosters, mate. Get Put another shrimp. Put another shrimp on the ball, mate. What am I supposed to do? Uh, we Not got some... put it on the barbie? Exactly, crikey! I know they say that. What's that? Uh, what's that? What's that song that all the Hey Olins? What's that Australian song about I'm the kick a, kick a bird? No, the kick a bird tree, the oh, the folk song. Anyway, uh, this is a show called Beard Buddies, where the two of us Beard have buddies. beards. And we, Beard that's buddies. That's the theme song. Beard buddies. And we talk about movies. This is episode three. Now, I was talking about this before you joined, Kaylin. Uh, last time, we ended up talking for three hours. And I had a great time. We had a good time. I but I want these bottles of wine. I want these shows to be a little bit more concise for the actual Beard Buddies portion of the show. So, what I'll say is we watched the movie uh, Muppet Christmas Carol. <clears throat> nice. That's what the people came to see. Yep. Um. And it was it was good. It was different than I remembered. See, I haven't seen this movie since it came out in 1992. Love a Christmas and Carol. The thing about, yeah, the thing about that is, um, I didn't remember that it was a 100% kids movie. Oh no! But exactly. also, it seemed much grander as a kid. Like it, it seemed did. like way I, bigger. Yeah, I agree with but you. But watching it now as an adult, it was a quick watch. It was only 125, uh, one hour and 25 minutes. I was going to say the same um, thing. And it was easy to get through. And it's very much... Uh, so this movie came after Scrooge, which we did last time. And I feel like they took a lot of inspiration directly from Scrooge. Now, I know the so? Christmas... I know that we'll get into that. I know the Christmas Carol is like a pretty standard story. Yeah, right? what's his face? Dickens. Yeah, Dickens. It's a pretty standard story. But there were some moments in this that I was like, that 
I, did that happen in the original Dickens story, or did they reimagine it for Scrooge or for Scrooge? And then, and then the Muppets movie was like, let's just jack, oh, let's just jack that. Interesting. What what parts what parts are tickling your fancy about some foul play, as it seems? Okay. So the, specifically, when he goes to Christmas present and he goes to his nephew's party, yeah, 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 they 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 play a game, and he specifically tries to interject into it to be to like answer, right, 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 right? right, right. and they're playing a very similar game, right. And uh, I was like, that's that's an odd choice. I don't know if it's right out of the original story or if it's like that happened. I, in the original story, I will be honest with you. I've never read the original. Um, I, from what I recall, researching about the movie, um, the Muppets follow the the original novella uh, almost okay. almost spot on. They have their extra little, you know what I mean? They have their extra little little pizzazz, their panache. They're uh, yeah. they're Muppets, right? They they have their extra little thing, but for the most part, it falls it spot on. So I think that means that Scrooge, like what 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 Scrooge did, happened in the original thing, and the Muppets also kind of followed the original thing. And Scrooge has a slightly longer runtime, and I felt that mo- like I love that That's movie. That's kind of the relationship, I think. Yeah, and I, I love that movie, but the problem. I found this time was watching it for like a this format where we have to talk about it and I have to take notes. Yeah, kind of sucked all the fun out of it. But there was no then I watch... to take take really. Yeah, for this. Yeah, it was an yeah because it's watch. so. It's, it was an enjoyable watch. I didn't have to take a lot of notes, and it was the basic structure without all the extra stuff. It just the Muppet stuff was what I loved. Mm-hmm. The the little the little jokes that they added at the beginning and, and end of scenes with uh, Rizzo and Gonzo, Gonzo just just excellent like it just you could take those characters out of the story and replace all the Muppets with humans and you have a perfectly fine telling yeah. of the Christmas Carol with with uh, with uh, uh, Michael Caine I'm Michael Caine uh, you have him you know just doing his thing did you notice how much makeup this man had on. Also, this is Michael Caine 30 years ago, and he still looked ancient. <laughs> Crazy. I, I, <laughs> I will say he looks the same as he does now. Uh, I didn't really notice too much about makeup, but uh, I fucking, I did write down uh, Gonzo and Rizzo are my favorite duo. Uh, yes. You know, Rizzo the rat and Gonzo the uh, whatever. And... Uh, Weirdo, actually. Yeah. His official his official title is Weirdo. I, I thought don't know it if you was remember whatever that from... or Gonzo the Great. I thought it was whatever or Gonzo the Great. Is no, it I, he always says I'm I'm Gonzo and I'm a weirdo. I like it, Gonzo. I've always, for whatever reason, I already know why, but I've already I've yeah, always associated with him because you're Gonzo, basically. Thank you. <laughs> and I'll be the I'll be the Rizzo to you, Gonzo. I'll talk like this all the time. Like and a, you can use me as a you can use me as a multi tool. In the first act of this movie, Gonzo uses him for like three different things. He uses him <laughs> to wash a window. He uses him to like uh you know a stoke a fire. The, the best the, line of the movie is his rat, uh, his tail or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, but that that line is the line I remembered the most. I have it written down here. Um, the, the light the lamp, not the rat, and he says that over and over. And I, yeah, I remember that from when I was a kid. And and there were little moments in this that I really remembered from when I was a child, like the fucking ghost of Christmas present. Let's just talk about that. The whole, jolly, so that whole bit. Like present. Yeah, the jolly fellow, right? Yeah, the 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 giant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who they do a forced perspective thing at when they introduce him to look like he's sitting Bigger. in the room, yeah. and I. I, I was watching it on, in 4K, and I honestly couldn't tell. Um, I couldn't tell if it was they made a giant puppet for that scene, or if they did first perspective. Right. But 
when he shrank down, I was like, they had to have done forced perspective because there's no way they'd make a giant Muppet for like three seconds. I agree with you. I assume the same, but I wouldn't put it past them if they actually did do a fucking giant Muppet just for that uh, that 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 angle or whatever, right? Uh, and That's you know, true. hats off to Jim Henson. You know, R.I.P. Rest in rest in peace. This is a film by uh, I think a Brandon Henson I think was the was the actual um, story by so I imagine is his son. Oh, that re- yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's uh, his son had a, a hand to play for sure. And yeah, in my research, uh, so uh, what's his name here? Uh, la 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 la. So Steve. Sorry, Brian Brian Henson. Brian. And it was his son, right? Yeah. 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 So uh, Steve Whitmire, I believe it's how it's pronounced. He did the voice for uh, Kermit in this movie. And, you know, uh, he, he talked about like the, the, the day before or maybe a few days before or something like that. He had a dream where Jim Henson came to him. It was like, basically gave him his you know the uh uh the the his good graces to do kermit and right. and and you know uh you know pick up where he left off kind of thing or whatever hi ho kermit the frog here Ooh, that's my kermit impression that was actually fucking like that sounded fucking dope I have a boner. I'm Kermit. I married a pig, and I had. Okay, let's just talk about also how they. Okay, so so Cratchit and his wife and he also Emily, did Rizzo, though, by the way, also did Rizzo. Oh, okay. Sorry. So sorry. They have kids. They show their kids. Yeah. And their kids are not freak monsters. No, they're uh, half and half. Pig hybrid. Well, not half and half. There's two. There, there's there's Tiny Tim. And, and there's uh, Peter, I think, and then the triplets the who pig. are all like their mother, yeah, the pig. Yeah. In my notes, I just wrote down pig and frog. Yeah. Um, and I couldn't get over the fact that pig and frog mated to create these children. But then again, they live in this alternate universe where humans exist with animals. With, yeah, humans exist <laughs> with Muppets. And uh, Michael Caine, so because he's interacting with the Muppets um, on their like soundstage or whatever, right? It's like a raised up stage so that the, the Muppeteers can be doing their thing at regular level. And then he, he's basically walking a very specific path. Like when he's doing his, his scenes with the Muppets, he's, he's walking a very specific path because they have to be there as well with like the dip. Like the- they, uh, they did that for Elf as well. The house um, behind the couch on the set of Elf. Yeah, had like a lowered part so the puppet master that did Elf yeah. could to walk around with them and like do stuff behind the couch. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, Ooh, and the funny okay, thing yeah, is, right. is people people on set would fucking fall into those holes all the time. So I wonder if on the set on the set of Muppet movies, I wonder if it's a whole thing where you have to sign a waiver if you're gonna walk around on set if you wipe out into one of these Muppet holes. I believe it. I believe it. Apparently, Michael Caine so, was very careful, though. Um, I believe it. And and to your your remark about the babies, the kids, or whatever, the frogs and the pigs, there was almost a thought. Uh, so, like, it's a it's Kermit the Frog and Miss Piggy the Pig, right? And so they make babies, yep. right? But so there was like you know a question of like half half frog, half pig. But then what they were going to do was so the way they the way we see it like two frogs, was it two pigs or three pigs or whatever, they were going to change the color of them. They were going to make pink frogs, like the kids were going to be pink frogs. Oh, yeah. And the, and then green. And the, the pigs were going to be green pigs. Because that would be Weird crazy. as fuck. <laughs> so I, uh, the way that I wrote my notes that sort of goes through the movie, so we've kind of jumped all around for the beginning here, but just to start Let's at the top. Let's go back to the beginning. Yeah, just to start at the top, um, I wrote the first thing I wrote down that in the credits, it's Rizzo the Rat as himself. And I'm pretty sure this was the, we were talking about this last time. This is the first time we see Rizzo and he ends up becoming 
uh, a very big character in the Muppets verse, as I'm calling it. Well, Gonzo um, and Rizzo are like the duo. They are the hands all, end all, be all. Like they're the, the they're they're better than Batman and Robin, I think. But hey, I mean, those are strong possible. words. They're strong words. I realize. If you're just joining us, uh, comment in the in the chat if you think that the combination of Gonzo and Rizzo, the the rat, are are a bigger, more important combination than Batman and Robin. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> <laughs> no, nope, nope. people are like, okay, I'm out of here. Um, so the the biggest thing that I noticed. Uh, just at the top of the movie was how surreal the Muppets are in this world. They exist in a regular sized world, but they're all like three feet tall. There's no question. Because the, but the world is also developed. So like the humans that live there still have to duck when they go into doorways. Yeah. So in this alternate universe, <laughs> <laughs> This guy, this guy, this guy thinks he knows it. This guy thinks he knows the answer to the. Uh, I think he just made a made an enemy. Let, let me like let me rephrase what I said. Gonzo <laughs> and Rizzo are more entertaining than Batman and Robin. I fucking love me the Batman and Robin, but Gonzo and Rizzo are more entertaining. I love how the Muppets. The like I've watched. I watched the original show back in the day. There was also like a baby Muppets thing, like cartoon thing or some shit like that. And then they yeah, had Muppet their, Babies. That was a great Muppet Babies. Yeah, exactly. And then there's the various movies they made. Uh, Christmas Carol and Treasure Island are my favorites. And I just lo- like, I don't know what it is, but just interjecting Muppets. Like it's, I like how it, bri- like, how do you say this? Um, let's say you want to teach someone something and it's boring. Right. Let's say you want to teach someone right. something that's boring. How, like, but it's a, it's an important message or story or whatever, right? How, gotcha. how, how do you get, how can you teach it, but, you know, give it some oomph? That's like what I feel the Muppets does for things. It, 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 so, you know, Dickens, fucking whoever wrote Treasure Island, <laughs> like, I never... Hey Google, <laughs> who wrote Treasure Island? Oh, that's right. What's this guy saying? Which pair? That's a good question. That's a very good question. The answer is Robert Louis Stevenson. I don't know if you heard that, Caitlin. I did hear the syllable. I heard the um, sound. Oh, okay. Um, see, the way that I, the way that, the reason I agree with you is because now I want to see uh, a full-on Batman and Batman movie, like for kids, where. Gonzo is Batman and Rizzo is Robin. Oh my god! Uh, with, with little Muppet costumes, and then all the Muppets play different characters in this universe. So obviously, yeah. the obviously the Eagle would be Mister Freeze. I'm down. I with think that. that's Mr. right Eagle, out yeah. of the gate. That, so, but that's who would be perfect, the Joker? Fozzie? Perfect no. Role. You fucking cast it. That's perfect. Fozzie would be the Joker because fuck Fozzie and you put that twisted makeup on Fozzie, perfect. That's, yep, yep. Also perfect <laughs> casting. Yep. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Uh, That's perfect. So Pig would probably probably be Poison Ivy. I I was gonna say Poison Ivy first, but then I was like, maybe she kind of has to be Catwoman, but in a Miss Piggy way. Okay, you but what, I mean? what does Kermit? What does Kermit do in all of this? Is right, he the Riddler? Just because he's green. Gonzo's Batman, right? You said Gonzo's Batman. Yeah. I almost want yeah. to make Kermit Alfred. Oh, <laughs> what a twist! No, you're gonna have Michael Caine come in and be Alfred because he's okay, Alfred okay, in the okay, Nolan verse. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh, give me, give me Commissioner Gordon. Give me Commissioner Gordon then for Kermit. Oh shit! It's uh, Staller and Waldorf. What? Are both Staller and Waldorf are both Commissioner Gordon? Like they're they're the Jacob Marley in this movie. What movie? In in the Christmas Carol. Oh well. We're, oh 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 oh. Okay 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 okay. 
Skylar oh, and Waldorf oh, right. do okay. double duty. Okay, okay. I see what you mean. As, right, right, right. But they rip the on they the rip balcony, on Gonzo. Right? The guys from the balcony, right? Yeah, yeah. Skylar and Waldorf. They they rip on Gonzo when he comes to meet them at the bat signal. Yeah. Also, the bat signal isn't a bat. It's the fucking nose. Just the nose. Just the nose. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> sweet. So who can Kermit be? Uh, I think uh, he might have to be the Riddler just because he's green. No, but... no, 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 no. No, fuck that. He has to be somebody big. He has to be he, somebody he big does. in the family. So does he, he, is he Nightwing? See. Is, is, is Rizzo a newer oh, Robin? Is Kermit so that... the original Batman and Gonzo and Rizzo are like next gen Batman and Robin? So this is like... <laughs> So we're casting Muppets Batman Beyond yeah, yo, right Kermit now. Kermit is Frank <laughs> yeah. Miller, like old school Batman, whatever the fuck it's called or whatever, right? Yeah, uh, The Dark Knight Returns. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> this is fucking gold, dude. I love it. Holy shit. I think it's great. All because of fan interaction. See, this is key, my friend. Bruce Wayne's dad. Oh, <laughs> damn, that's a good one. Who is this person? I love this guy. Four-eyed ref. Joey F. <laughs> He's either old school Batman or Batman's dad. I'm down with that. I'm down with that. Yeah, I agree. Um, we need a uh, we who we need a like a Harley Quinn. Yeah, I thought that was oh, you. Oh man, I thought that was you. What? Who was? I know, I know who this man is. Oh, you know who it is. Sorry. What did they just text you? Jason knows who I am. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 my boy Joe. I just wanted to double check. It's Joe Thorrington. What up? He's uh. What up, Joe? So at Super Kick shows, this guy comes up to uh, uh, the shows, and he's one of the biggest Super Kick fans. No, P- Miss Piggy is not Harley Quinn. Okay. Um. I, I was I, I, I kind of like Miss Piggy as Harley Quinn, but I guess like I agree, but at the same time, she it. needs to be a bigger character. Harley Quinn has to be some like tertiary character. What who... Harley Quinn is one of the biggest female characters in uh, the... now. Yeah, but she used to and... just be the sidekick of Mister J. Yeah, but you you know that the Batman animated series basically invented Harley Quinn and just like that shit blew up because yo Batman animated series is like one of the best versions of Batman in my opinion I love it agreed it's uh they it's a cartoon that made uh, like invented characters and canonized like I don't think Clayface would be that big a deal yeah if it wasn't for like the animated series they gave him soul I Clayface is one of my favorites for sure so who in the Muppets verse would play Clayface? Ooh. Uh, okay, let's wait one second. Ooh, let's wait, wait, wait. Ah, uh, la, 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 la. Give me... No, that's right. Okay, who, who, who do we got to run through? Okay, who's monster? Well, okay. Who's monster? So who's the scientist that's with Beaker? Because oh. they would probably end up being the... Uh, there's a Batman villain who's, like, got a... Um, a puppet. I was gonna say the guy with the with the w- ventriloquist. With, the, with yeah, yeah, yeah. So that would be. I think That's they would I be a good fit for that. Who would Beaker be um, though? Who would Beaker be? Beaker would be like. Oh, he would be the puppet. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. What about uh, monster? What about monster? Oh man, monster would just be monster. He would just be a Batman villain. Okay. Monster just himself, is in this just movie. monster yeah. in the Batman world. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, he was so fucking dope in this movie. He he only got a second, but he co- like he comes in, he just comes right into frame. Yeah, yells quiet. Yeah, right, and then you know, Everyone's and then everybody like, chills the fuck out. Yeah, and then the music comes on, and he's playing the triangle, and I was like, oh, they're making my boy fucking have to go over here. This is the ghost of Christmas past. So actually, we've moved on. We're, we're still at the beginning. We've moved on to Ghost of Christmas Past. Who, right before I get into this monster bit, we're zigzagging a little the, bit, but it's fine. It's entertaining. It's but it's fine. Love. That's what we do. Yeah. The monster, 
the 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 Perfect. yeah. You know what? I'll stick to that. The monster who is the ghost of Christmas past scared the oh, shit out of me. Oh, the girl, the little baby girl. It was like a don't try to make hyper realistic human. No, no, no. Child Muppet. Do you know what they did? They took no. like a Muppet head or whatever, and then like some drapey shit. And then what they were doing first was they had it in oil. They had this big ass. I did a little bit of research on the movie because, like, I watched the movie. I enjoyed it. There wasn't really too much about, like, you know what I mean? Like, it was, it was just, I'll tell you this much. I fucking love musicals. I love them. But, so, for the Ghost of the Christmas Past, they had this big ass vat of uh, oil or something, right? And then they had the, so, like, instead of, like, getting all digital or whatever, right? So, to get this all waviness. They had the big ass vat of oil with the little Muppet head and the little flowing shit. And, uh, but I guess because of shooting and having to constantly do it, the oil got too expensive because they had to like eventually clean it off or some shit. So eventually they switched over to water. But what, so did you just say that that little Ghost of Christmas past scared you? Yeah, fuck that thing. That scared me as an adult, and the Ghost of Christmas Present freaked me out as a child. I remember vividly being like, what the fuck is this forced perspective giant with rosy cheeks who, like, ages in 10 minutes? But this, it came on my screen, yeah. and I, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm watching a 58-inch screen, 4K. It fucking was very vivid. It wasn't like when you're watching on a VHS, and it just kind of looks like, like it, what your memory of the thing looks like. Kind of I was like, yeah, it looked very surreal. This whole movie looked very surreal. Yeah. And uh, I like actually, Joe, I like your idea of Scooter as the Riddler. That's well, pretty I good. Like I can see him too. dressed up. He's one of the only like human, uh, besides Statler and Waldorf, he's only one of the only human puppets. Yeah. Uh, like, puppets. Is he though? His mouth <laughs> like this. That's true. He's Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> no, Monster has to play Monster in this world. Oh. The Monster Guy's Two-Face is a really good idea, though, because I'd like half of his face to be like the weird Muppet human. That's not bad. That's like, then, like, like he's a got... human with a beard versus m- Monster Muppet, like, Monster. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's, he, uh, he's got the two-face colors already from oh, man. the two-face hit in with acid Batman Forever. Oh, man. Perfect. <laughs> Genius. Genius. Oh, my God. We should go down to Disney and tell them to fucking hire us to make the Batman. Because, well, they don't own Batman. They own Marvel. But, uh... Tony, who fuck. owns DC? Warner Paramount? Brothers. Oh, WB. Warner Brother. Yo, Warner yeah. Brother. When you see the what? top. <laughs> I was going to, okay. <laughs> so move, moving on, um, I really just love the fact that, uh, oh, Tari talked about all this because we zigzagged. We zigged and we zagged. Yeah, but uh, that's oh, what the, Rizzo, that's what people love. That's true. Rizzo uh, definitely breaks the fourth wall a lot. Yeah. Because he's like the he's the comic relief to Gonzo, who's the narrator, but also the comic relief. Yeah. Which yep. there are so many scenes where, like, you know, at the end when uh, Scrooge sees himself die or he sees his gravestone, Rizzo, like, Gonzo's like, that's so sad. And Rizzo is ugly crying. <laughs> 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 which I was like, that's, that's like an added little bit to put in like an already pretty funny concept all these little beginning and endings of scenes it it um, helps lighten it up because it's 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 i i like i like that about it it's a nice like it's a nice it's it's a nice way to make it palatable or whatever the word is for kids palatable yeah it's a nice way to do that right like it's the original story but with a little a little spice. Well, not even spice. What's the opposite of spice? A little sugar or whatever. A little sugar. Yeah. Uh, the reason why I brought up the fourth wall breaking because I when they're in the when Jake. Okay, so we're back. Let's go back to when he first sees Jacob and Robert Marley. He goes upstairs, right, into his house, trapped by like chains. Chill. 
and and Rizzo and Gonzo are outside, and oh, Gonzo's yeah, yeah, yeah. explaining what's happening, and Rizzo's like, "How do you know that? You can't see him. He's inside." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, this is this is what these two guys are going to be like during this film." Yeah. And then that's when the ghosts literally, ghosts literally attack him with chains, and which the, I was like, this is a kid's movie. You see the window light up as he calls it. Yep. Yeah. And Statler and Waldorf proceed to do a, like a little song, I believe, about da, how da, they used da, to be da, da, da. Yep. It, all, it kind uh, of sounds like Robocop a little bit. <laughs> that's a movie we should we should do because I haven't seen Robocop since it traumatized me so much I couldn't watch horror movies are you for fucking years. joking me traumatized yo and I am down just to add on to that but yo the original Robocop is fucking amazing between him getting shot in the penis repeatedly <laughs> the guy getting shot in the dick and then later in the movie where the swamp monster it Murphy fucked me up for literally the... oh no oh am I we're getting a little over spinny here? yeah okay yeah, original Robocop, uh, though. Dope. I watched the remake the other day. Not dope. It's, I've heard that it's just, it exists. Yeah. It's filmed yeah, here, yeah. right? It's, it's filmed in Toronto. Everything's filmed in Canada. That's because it's cheaper here. <laughs> Everything's filmed in Toronto fucking, or Vancouver. No, fucking people that make things, hire us, please. Well, they film a lot of stuff in, the, oh, us, like specifically you and I. You. Yes, we've more than proven. Me. We've more than proven we can come up with a good idea because Batman starring Gonzo and Rizzo. Dope. Chef's kiss. Yeah. Chef's kiss. <laughs> so, uh, that okay. So now we're so they come out. They sing their little song. Uh, Marley Ghost Christmas past is a fucking nightmare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, they go to the past. Gonzo and Rizzo catch a ride with them, which was funny. They just like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. we're going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. The part of uh, the part that I like the most about them traveling with the, the spirits and with Scrooge is they were able to interact with the past, the present, and the future. Scrooge wasn't, and the spirits aren't like couldn't really interact either. But Gonzo and Rizzo, it feels like they went. Oh, with to each, those with each, right? Yeah. Okay, right, 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 right. Yeah. Because I don't want to like. I don't want to sit here and nitpick too much about a kid's movie from the early 90s that stars Muppets, but there were a lot of moments where I was like, that doesn't make any sense. But there were a lot of moments where I was like... Like where they fucked up actually... the shelf in the past, but fucking Scrooge couldn't talk to the kids in the past. Yeah. Yeah. So... Oh, Animal. We talked about that. I think we kept calling him Monster. Yeah, I think... <laughs> yeah, you know what? Yeah, my bad. My bad, Muppets. My bad, Jim. And my bad, fans. Sorry, I'm not. Sorry, we have we have one viewer. It's Joe, and that's who we're playing to right now. And if he wants, if he wants, so Joe, what we were talking about when we were saying that monster should have uh, animal, you know, be turned animal. into that. We were talking about animal. Yeah. But then I got this va- I got this weed vape pen and I hit it like I hit it at like seven. Those weed and I'm vapes still just like yeah, yeah, they're pretty good. They're, they're pretty dope, good. man. Yeah. Um. Okay. So they go to the past. They catch a ride. They play it off like statues, which I thought was hilarious for that moment. We get to see Scrooge as a lonely ass kid, which is a little bit different than Scrooge. I think Scrooge took some liberties and made him more like his dad was this hard ass, but oh yeah, in it this was more movie, modernized for his childhood for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This this history is what I remember. Same with the party, the the the, the party in the past. What did, uh, he they still did the thing where he's working all where Scrooge is working all through the party instead of like having a good time. Right. Oh, but they, right, he right, right, meet, right. He still meets his Fuzzy, future. Fozzie Wiggers or whatever his name is. <laughs> Which was a perfect role for Fozzie because uh, I fuck I can't deal with Fozzie, but I also love him. It's what? a weird like. It's all, Foz- only so much. Only so Fozzie's much. that friend. Fozzie's that friend, like, you want to hang out with sometimes, but, like, it doesn't take long for them to... <laughs> oh, man. I mean, you and I, maybe you with other people, but I always, when we lived in Halifax, I always had a good time partying down with the K-Man. 
I know your name starts with C, and the K-Man is Kramer. But um, I know we used to have a we used to have a fun time. Uh, that being said, of course, Fozzie uh, is annoying, but in like a really wholesome, not fun way. He's he, like uh, he is annoying. I've been watching his voice though. Oh, and also, I'm pretty sure Mr. Eagle, whatever his name is, is by the same guy. I, I remember watching it. I was like, oh, I can hear the same, like, inflection or whatever the, the, no, the word is. No, it's, it's Cookie Monster was the Eagle. Did you notice that? No, I didn't notice that. Is it? Go back. I was, I wrote, I made a note about that, actually. I was like, that's, that voice is a dead ringer when he's talking about, like, you have to make the money and be scholarly. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. Imagine that, but it's, uh, but it's, uh, sorry, Joe just sent me monster. Yeah. Oh, okay. Monster is a character. Monster were we talking looks about like monster or animal though, because I said it wrong. I'm we were talking, talking about, about animal, animal from the band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were talking about animal from the band. Monster is the giant monster from I think Muppets oh, Tonight. Oh, the big shaggy one. Yeah. My yeah. bad, man. Yo, yeah, my bad. Yo, viewers, I, I can, I'm on a story. All of our I'm on a cell phone, so I just looked at viewers. Facebook. Oh, oh, it's a Swirlin. Are you back? Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm back. Sorry, I have to stop uh, I have to stop yelling. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, Madison, if you can hear me on uh, Jason's headphones. Are you, am I on your phone or your headphones? Oh, no. Right, sorry, I'm back. Oh, we're back. Uh, did you... no, I have headphones on, so I just need to keep it down okay. a little bit. Sorry, Madison. Yo, tell Madison I'm sorry. Yo, Madison, if you're watching, no, I'm she's... sorry. She's trying to sleep. Um, it, I hope you get better soon. Uh, so I did a little, uh, I was like, so I watched the movie, and then I was like, hey, let me go see if I can find out some interesting facts. One thing. I can't confirm this. I can't verify this. But one thing, maybe some random kid made it up. I don't know. But one thing I found was uh, they considered George Carlin for Scrooge. That would have been a completely different movie. It would have been different. It would have been very interesting, though. I do like, I like, so Michael Caine, it was the perfect balance. Michael Caine brought like he brought the seriousness of Dickens and then the Muppets brought a light, uh, you know, uh, enjoyable, uh, palatable, whatever the way word is again. I can't, uh, can't palatable. I can tell. Yeah. That <laughs> word. It, it, it was the perfect like synergy or whatever. Yeah, no, I agree. I, uh, I thought, like, and it's funny too because Michael Caine didn't phone it in, you know. Like he felt like no, it felt like he was like doing he was doing his Real. thing. Yeah, yeah. and, and they, it was like, good. And he did. He was acting with them. I I did read this, so I remember out of my little like attempts to try and find some extra shit. Like I watched the movie, I had like a page of stuff that I wrote down. The other ones I had a lot more, but with this one. So, like, I looked up shit about it, and he he had a, a quote, a comment or whatever, where he was like, and I'm not good at this. It made me, it made me reconsider how I talk to people. Um, he said that he never broke eye contact. So, like, he looked at the Muppet or whatever, right, in its eyes like it was another person. And he was looking yeah, at not it the, in another person's eyes or whatever, right? And not the Muppets here that was portraying. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I personally have a hard time. Uh, I'm doing it right now as I'm talking. I'm looking off instead of looking at you right here, um, because like you can. I feel like if I look at you and you look at me, you can like see my like 
uh, what's it called when like uh, my fragileness inside. Mm-hmm. Fragility is that a word? Yeah, fragility is a word. That. <laughs> well, that's the thing about podcasting, though. If we were in person, the whole like the ability to engage with another person all comes from looking them in the eye. So when you're podcasting, you gotta you gotta look into the other person's eyes to get that like to know when the other person's gonna talk, for instance. And it's hard to do, like, I on my other podcast, Blossom Buddies, um, it's hard for me and Craig to to get that because of the fact that we do it over Zoom now, right? Right. So it's there's a delay. Yo, there's, I'm going to say, you know, these headphones, I feel like they're helping as opposed to the last Oh, they year. definitely do. The headphones are key, man. Like, if, if, if we just both had our cell phones, it would be like a phone call, but, like, worse than a phone delay call. Delay or something delay but also just like the whole like you you would just be hearing your phone talk to you instead of like just a, you know noise coming through a headphone right 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 i uh i'm gonna derail a little bit i was at my cousin's last week and and uh my uh i have like uh i have i have a couple cousins i was over at one cousin and he lives by my other cousin and then my other cousin came over and said what's up and I was like, oh, man, how do you braid hair? And she's like, oh, like this. I'm like, can, can you show me? And then so she did like a fucking braid right here. And then a braid. And then I was like, oh, man, you got it. Like, and then just like did another braid right here. And it was dope. But we didn't have any elastics. And then so it fell out. Well, yeah. I, you could, well, you, my beard does the same thing. I could do two sides. I trimmed my beard because I had to go do a thing. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it splits in the middle right here. I could have two giant, giant chops. V, when you did Wolverine for Halloween, you did the chops. You you did like you got rid of this and you had this. Yeah, it was dope. I spiked my hair up. Let's give a a, let's give a shout out. Twelve years. (laughs) Twelve years. Is that what last time you cut your hair? What? No, I mean, no, I said 12 years is when I did Wolverine. Oh, no, was it, was it? How Dude, long I've been, been in out of Toronto for... How long you been out of Halifax? I've been in Toronto for like nine years. Okay, so let's say 10 years ago. Yeah, was it the Halloween right before I left? Because it's possible that... You know what, it might have been before that one. Let's say 11 years ago. But, All right. as far as Muppet Christmas Carol, one, <laughs> I got to shout out Jim Henson. Uh, you know, he brought magic to the screen. Uh, and then you got your, so you got your, you got your, you got your Michael Caine as Scrooge. And he, he brings that seriousness without it being too serious. Cause it's still a kid's movie, right? You got Dave Goals as Gonzo and Gonzo is my favorite fucking Muppet. Steve yep. Whitmire, Kermit and Rizzo, fucking, and when I read that, I was like, because they're, the, the voices, like, so whenever I try to do, like, sometimes, like, I'll try to be like, ooh, let me try and fucking impression something or whatever, but, like, I feel like whenever I do, there's still, like, my, like, my my actual voice still at the core of it. Do you know what I mean? Like like sometimes I get close and it's kind of there, but my my actual voice is still like at the core of it. Do you know what I mean? I'm not sure if that makes any sense. No, it does make a lot of sense. I have the same I have the same thing with my voice. I can, I'm not like a voice chameleon. Like you right. know, you know you meet a person and they start banging up like even amateur impressions and you're like, how are you? We like. Like I can, like I did Kermit earlier. Yeah. But you know, I can do a little bit of, uh, I can do a little bit of Peter Griffin. You would think that's bad, but even that, like, I, I didn't really change my voice that much. I can, oh, I can do, I can do Bubbles. You fucking boys over here. <laughs> I think that's because I think that's because we're mirror timers, though. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. Um, I can do a little bit of. Cartman, but that's kind of a loud impression that I don't want to do right now. Anyway, here's what I want to say. 
uh, we are nearing the end of the allocated time for this actual episode. So in so we talked about pretty much everything except for the ghost of Christmas future. Hit me. So the, that was another thing that I wanted to bring up because the ghost Scared of Christmas the future shit out of me as a kid. Same, but also this one looked a lot like the one from Scrooge as well. Yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah. And that's that's really all I wanted to point out, but it was the same thing where, so the difference, be, remember we were talking about in Scrooge how he does the ghost of Christmas present and like he's like, oh, you know, I'm going to change my ways, but then he immediately doesn't learn anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In this, Michael Caine, Scrooge, he already, like, He's ready to go home yeah. after Ghost of Christmas Present. He's yeah. like, can I just can I just go home? Tiny Tim can't die. Yeah. Can't fucking die. Yeah. Because there's that whole sequence where we see the family, they love each other. They've got the tiny ass turkey. Yeah. You know, Tiny Tim is die. He's like, is Tiny Tim going to die if I don't There's got to be a way to change it. And Ghost of Christmas Present, of course, is like, well, you know, I can't really say, but if things go continue to go this way, Right. And then he hits Scrooge with a little bit of that, you know, little, you want that little bit of that poor people are the start or the surplus, you know, they, you know, you want them gone anyway. So this, this goes to the, you know, poor people surplus to death, <laughs> which is harsh. I'll, there were a lot of really sad points in this that really kind of caught me off guard for a kid's movie, um, which, part? which it means, which, which, well, that for instance, um, and also the future, Scrooge's future, when he's talking, when he sees that spider demon guy talking to all the little minions who have like collected the dead guy's stuff. And it turns out when he finds out that the dead guy was actually Scrooge. Yeah. I was like, oh, fuck. Like, he's already changed his ways quite a bit. Like, I don't know that he really deserves to be like, have his nose rubbed in at this point. So. Yeah, that's how Disney it all works rolls. Out. <laughs> yeah, no, this but this wasn't a Disney movie. Disney just acquired Muppets at some point. This wasn't a Disney movie back then. It says Walt Disney on my copy. When when what's the trademark on your copy? Uh one second. Sorry viewers. I need glasses. <laughs> uh one second, one second. Two thousand and four is what I have here as Disney acquiring. That sounds the like that sounds like. Oh, when did this come out? Ninety two. The movie came out ninety two, but Disney started buying up everything in the you, early two thousand. Fuck Disney, by the way. Uh, you guys make great movies, but fuck you. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Yeah, fuck this. Oh, oh, oh! Also, <laughs> also, yo, Jace man, Jace man. Um, does, uh, okay. You, are we both in the same boat? We've never read the original, uh, Charles Dickens or whatever, uh, Christmas Carol? Uh, I believe so. Okay. I believe I've done it. I don't think I've ever read it. I think I had kids books of it that sort of truncated the whole story into like right, right, 50 right, right. pages. I never read it either. Um, while you were watching, uh, Muppet Christmas Carol. Um, does Scrooge have gold teeth? I don't think so. But that sounds like something he has in like the original story because he's so rich, as I recall. Did you not notice? Okay, so when I was watching the movie, I'm watching the movie, right? And then every once in a while, not like, not like right up in your face, but like almost like um, like they had like a molar or something like they had like their back molars. It like every one like there'd be a little shimmer, like but also at the same time, it was like '90s, so like fucking movie stars weren't like all straight up pristine white teeth in the early '90s at that point yet. That's true. Could have just been a yellow tooth. No, I'm pretty sure. Like go back and t- well. I got the DVD. I can go check it easy. What'd you do? Download it or you got it? Or watch it on stream? What do you have? Frame? What do you have? Disney? 
No, it's on Disney Plus, and but you can rent it from like Amazon Prime. But I just uh, yo ranked it. Uh, I'm not gonna I downloaded look. a card, Kaylin. I I'm not happy about it, but I've done it a few times myself. Um, have you ever noticed? I was at my cousin's the other day. They had Home Alone for free on YouTube. Sweet. Yeah, it was fucking sweet. They have a few. I watched E.T. for free on YouTube. I watched a few movies. Huh? Like, YouTube has a few free things, and I'm like, how the fuck does this work? It's a glowing endorsement for YouTube. Sorry, IG. <laughs> I mean, pretty much, pretty much all owned by the same shit. I, YouTube's owned by Google, I guess. Wait, wait, wait. Let's, wait, uh, wait. let's finish. Let's... Beard buddies. Beard buddies. <laughs> let's finish this out. Let's finish out this episode right quick. We're almost there. And then we'll cut, we'll cut the live yeah. and then we'll go back onto the live and just talk about whatever the fuck. We'll do a post show where we just chill and Green drink room. Beers. In the green room. Post show in we're the green so room. We're so close. Dude, we're, we're doing the most concise episode. And it's episode three of this beautiful podcast. Because this, to date, this is the most on topic we've been. So anyway, so the, the final shit is he goes to the future. He sees himself dead. Nobody respects him. So he, that's, that's what pushes him over the, the, the edge. Yeah. To be like, I want to be a better person. Yeah. So then, then he wakes up. And he's like, oh, shit. It was all a dream. I was going to sleep, eating some cheese. And it's still I think today. It was the, the spirits yeah. had, they, we had the power to make. Uh, he said something. I'm not sure. I was curious but, about that because I was like, because when they did the present, they didn't do present. They did present and then continue like to move forward. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That was one thing that I was like, I wasn't sure if that's in the original book or not. But that was one thing I was curious about. I was like, oh, because like it wasn't like it was, but then it continued, right? Yeah. So the thing that I wanted to talk about here, though, is remember how in Scrooge I kept saying like when he doesn't learn a fucking lesson after the Christmas present stuff, I brought it up in this. Yeah. Well, there's an interesting thing that happens because Scrooge keeps his kind of asshole way. He does two things that kind of rub me the wrong way. First... Three things, actually. He goes outside, he throws the money at the bunny who previously had uh, come to his door to be like, please, I'll play, play some money for a song. And that he throws the money and too. says, go get a turkey. Go get a turkey. So he goes and gets the turkey. He's like, come with me. Uh, you're going to carry the turkey. You're a giant, you're a tiny bunny. You're going to carry the turkey while we go over to Cratchit's house. <laughs> then he shows up at Cratchit's house and trolls Cratchit by being like, why aren't you in work today? Yeah, why, he's a why fucking aren't you dick going too. to work? And Crash is like, I you gave me the day off, man. Like Kermit through this whole thing is just like, I don't know. I'm just trying to live my life, man. I don't I just want Christmas Day off to spend with my sixteen kids. This one's a shit. little cripple. And then the final straw for me is at the end of Charles Dickens, Tiny Tim is supposed to say, God bless us, everyone. Yeah. And Tiny Tim goes, God bless us. And then Scrooge cuts him off and goes, God bless us, everyone. And I was like, oh, my God, he didn't learn anything. Now he's just like, I'm going to pay people to like me. I'm just going to pay people off to like me. I didn't even notice be that. Dick. Yeah. You just blew my mind. I'm gonna... Yes. I don't. Once again, I don't think Scrooge learned a thing. I think he's just going to be a raging asshole in that little town to the Muppets. But this, instead, he's going to be an asshole. And he's going to turn around and be like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Crutchet. Here's $10,000, which is, is better. I'm sorry for as much like... as it helps me. That's, yeah. not, that's not being actually sorry. No, that's <sighs> just like, you know, fundamentally, the screwed story isn't really a good lesson. You know, when you're faced with all the horrible shit that could happen if you continue to act like that, that's not a that's not, you should be able you should change your ways on your own. Well, see now, so that's a very good point because uh, I actually was having those feelings earlier. I was like, okay, so let's say let's say you did travel back from the past or whatever, right? It's like, oh, this shit ended up this way, but when you do whatever action you do is it because you chose to do it or is it because like there's certain things you can learn from you know what i mean like there's certain things where 
you made a choice not because of what you honestly felt it's because you were following something or you were scared of something or whatever right like you, you didn't make the choice wholly on this is what i'm com- this is what i'm like confident or comfortable with myself about choosing to do right and right. so in those situations like it could have been a whole different pathway that resulted afterwards but for the situations where you you know you you have like you have everyone has their vibration or whatever right like you're you are who you are there's a lot of similarities to to all of us like there's a lot of core basic similarities but at the same time we're all different and sometimes those like to convey those no one's a mind reader right and Mm -hmm. to convey thoughts without being able to directly convey thoughts is like tricky that's true so with that (laughs) we've uh we've we've covered a muppet christmas carol uh i feel like we were very concise here we didn't stray off the beaten path too much so uh come on by we're gonna do a little after special and just talk just talk to each other for probably another hour or so if uh if you enjoyed this, send us, hit us up on uh, Instagram and let us know. If, if uh, you enjoyed this, um, uh, <laughs> internet, uh, get the people with the internet money. You know what? Fuck, fuck internet money. Well, I like it. I, I, I mean, like I'm it, not opposed, but I also <laughs> like to entertain. I hope you guys are entertained at least. Yeah, we had a few people in interacting tonight, so that was dope. But I I'm think this was the best and... one, actually. Oh, hands down. Yeah. I'm going to end it here, and uh, I'm going to start a new live, and uh, we'll talk in a moment. All right. Goodbye. <laughs>